You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on the power of intention. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian welcoming you to The Philosopher's Notes on the power of intention. Learning to co-create your world your way by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. This is one of my all-time favorite books, and we'll start with one of my favorite quotes from Wayne. He says, quote, Good morning. This is God. I will be handling all of your problems today. I will not need your help, so have a miraculous day. (laughs) All right, Wayne Dyer is one of my absolute favorite teachers. In fact, my spiritual family tree, I put him right there below Maslow in the spiritual dad spot. If you haven't read this book yet, I hope you do. If you've read it, I think you'll enjoy some of my favorite big ideas. In any case, let's get this show on the road and kick it off with a healthy overdose of serotonin. So, overdosing on serotonin, that's the first big idea. Have you ever heard about the effects of kindness on your brain? Dyer shares the amazing science of kindness in The Power of Intention. It goes something like this. Serotonin is the drug that makes you feel good. It's what all the pharmaceutical companies pump into those wonderful little antidepressants. It's also a little drug God decided to pump through our brains when we do things he, she, it likes. It's kind of like a little reward for good behavior, you know? Anyway, get this. When you do something kind for someone else, the person you're helping has serotonin released in her brain. She feels happier. And so do you. And the good news is, we've got two more serotonin-induced happier people in the world. Yeah. But the most incredible thing is this. Not only do you and the person you helped feel better, so does some random person who happened to watch your act of kindness. Amazing. And I like serotonin. How about you? I say we overdose today. Let's be kind. And the next big idea is act as if. Dyer says, act as if everything you desire is already here. Treat yourself as if you already are what you'd like to become. End quote. The way Wayne describes acting as if is genius. My rendition goes something like this. Who do you want to be? What's your ideal? Are you enlightened? Are you in perfect physical shape? Whatever it is, get that image. Then, on a moment-to-moment basis, act as if you already were that person. What would the enlightened being that you are do in this moment of tension? Perhaps breathe in? And breathe out, gaining perspective and maintaining equanimity? Good. Then act like that enlightened person now. How about that perfectly healthy person that you imagine? Good. What would he or she do right now? What would they eat? How often would they exercise? Perfect. That's what you do now. Act as if, moment to moment to moment. And sooner than you think, you won't be acting anymore. How amazingly cool is that? All right, the next big idea is coming to oneself. And we start with a quote from Carlos Castaneda, who says, In the universe, there is an immeasurable, indescribable force, which shamans call intent. And absolutely everything that exists in the entire cosmos is attached to intent by a connecting link. That's pretty powerful. You want to connect to the power of intention? Dyer offers us the four steps of intention. Discipline, wisdom, love, and surrender. So you exercise your discipline by building strong habits. Do the things you know you should do. Live with integrity to your ideal. Develop your wisdom as you learn in the classroom that is our lives. Open your heart as you learn to love more and more. Loving who you are, what you do, and those around you. And surrender to the force that's bigger than you, the force that beats your heart, the force that Wayne calls the power of intention. In the words of Aldous Huxley, the spiritual journey does not consist in arriving at a new destination where a person gains what he did not have or becomes what he is not. It consists in the dissipation of one's own ignorance concerning oneself and life and the gradual growth of that understanding which begins the spiritual awakening. The finding of God is a coming to oneself. End quote. Beautiful. All right, the next big idea is namaste. Wayne says, quote, When you meet anyone, treat the event as a holy encounter. End quote. 
namaste. It's one of my favorite words. It's Sanskrit. It means I bow to the divine within you. May we make every encounter we have today an opportunity to see the divine within ourselves and within others. Namaste. The next big idea is say yes. Quote, one of the most effective means for transcending ordinary and moving into the realm of extraordinary is saying yes more frequently in eliminating no almost completely. I call it saying yes to life. Say yes to yourself, to your family, your children, your coworkers, and your business. End quote. And Wayne continues by urging his readers to adopt the attitude of the Sufi poet and mystic Hafez, who says, I rarely let the word no escape from my mouth, because it is so plain to my soul that God has shouted yes, yes, yes to every luminous movement in existence. And how about the beautiful wisdom from another Sufi, Rumi? You were born with potential. You were born with goodness and trust. You were born with ideals and dreams. You were born with greatness. You were born with wings. You are not meant for crawling, so don't. You have wings. Learn to use them and fly. Let's say yes. And as we do that, remember to connect to service. Quote, if you want to feel connected to your own purpose, know this for certain. Your purpose will only be found in service to others and in being connected to something far greater than your mind, body, ego. End quote. And Dyer continues, quote, you'll feel most on purpose when you're giving your life away by serving others. When you're giving to others, to your planet and to your source, you're being purposeful. Whatever it is that you do, if you're motivated to be of service to others while being authentically detached from the outcome, you'll feel on purpose, regardless of how much abundance flows back to you. End quote. That's absolutely beautiful. And it reminds me of Viktor Frankl's remarkably powerful wisdom when he says, Again and again, I therefore admonish my students in Europe and America, don't aim at success. The more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you're going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue. And it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen. And the same holds for success. You have to let it happen by not caring about it. I want you to listen to what your conscience commands you to do and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. Then you will live to see that in the long run, in the long run, I say, success will follow you precisely because you had forgotten to think about it. Wow. So what are you connected to? How are you serving? And that leads to the next big idea. What are you seeking? Wayne says, you must be what it is that you're seeking. This is a universe of attraction and energy. You can't have a desire to attract a mate who's confident, generous, non-judgmental, and gentle, and expect that desire to be manifested if you're thinking and acting in non-confident, selfish, judgmental, or arrogant ways, end quote. This is very much like the acting as if idea and begs the question, what are you seeking? Who are you being? Are they matched? Let's make it so. As we do that, let's move on to the faces of intention. Wayne describes the field of intent. He says, It grows my fingernails, it beats my heart, it digests my food, it writes my books, and it does this for everyone and everything in the universe. End quote. And Wayne details these seven faces of intention creativity, kindness, love, beauty, expansion, unlimited abundance, and receptivity. Just reading those words is a beautiful experience, isn't it? I actually memorized them and made them my mantra for a while. I am creativity, kindness, love, beauty, expansion, unlimited abundance, and receptivity. I am creativity, kindness, love, beauty, expansion, unlimited abundance, and receptivity. I am creativity, kindness, love, beauty, expansion, unlimited abundance, and receptivity. You may want to press pause and and, uh, say that out loud to yourself a few times and just soak in that energy. Then ask yourself the question, how can I be more creative today? How can I be more kind today? 
How can I appreciate beauty more today? How can I embrace the expansion of our universe and grow today? How can I flow with the unlimited abundance of the world today? How can I open up to the world more and more today? All those questions will lead you to be more inspirited. Wayne says, quote, If you've ever felt inspired by a purpose or calling, you know the feeling of spirit working through you. Inspired is our word for inspirited, end quote. So what inspires you? When do you feel this spirit working through you? Let's feel it more and more and more. And as we do that, let's remember the next big idea, empowering people. Quote, choose to be in close proximity to people who are empowering, who appeal to your sense of connection to intention, who see the greatness in you, who feel connected to God, who live a life that gives evidence that spirit has found celebration through them, end quote. This sentiment is also echoed throughout the wisdom of all the great teachers. From Rumi, who says, quote, stay with friends who support you in these. Talk with them about sacred texts and how you are doing and how they are doing and keep your practices together. To Susan Jeffers in her great book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, she says, it is amazingly empowering to have the support of a strong, motivated, and inspirational group of people. So who inspires you the most? How much time are you spending with them? Are you spending time with people who bring you down, who don't recognize your potential and see your greatness? What can you do to create more and more empowering relationships? Good. Time to do more of that. And the next big idea, true nobility. Quote, true nobility isn't about being better than someone else. It's about being better than you used to be. End quote. That's so true. Reminds me of Faulkner's wisdom. He says, don't bother just to be better than your contemporaries or predecessors. Try to be better than yourself. So don't compete. Come from your soul and create. Be you, the best you imaginable. And remember this, delete. Quote from Dyer, hit the delete button every time fear appears, end quote. And that's brilliant. Feeling fear? Delete. Delete, delete, delete. And ask yourself the question, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? How about some more wisdom on the subject? Wayne says, quote, by banishing doubt and trusting your intuitive feelings, you clear a space for the power of intention to flow through. Shakespeare says, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. And Ramana Maharshi says, doubts arise because of an absence of surrender. And Emerson says, one of my absolute favorites, always, 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 always do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. And the, another big idea called float. Quote, the Wright brothers didn't contemplate the staying on the ground of things. Alexander Graham Bell didn't contemplate the non-communication of things. Thomas Edison didn't contemplate the darkness of things. In order to float an idea into your reality, you must be willing to do a somersault into the unconceivable and land on your feet, contemplating what you want instead of what you don't have. As Thomas Troward points out, the law of flotation was not discovered by contemplating the sinking of things, but by contemplating the floating of things which floated naturally, and then intelligently asking why they did so. So what do you want to see float? Might want to start contemplating it floating then, huh? As often as you possibly can. And try to catch yourself when you find yourself focused on how your idea might sink and bring yourself back diligently, patiently, and persistently to the place of contemplating the success of your idea. Float, float, float. (laughs) All right, and the final big idea is good morning, this is God. Same quote I opened this with. Good morning, this is God. I will be handling all of your problems today. I will not need your help, so have a miraculous day. (laughs) How great is that? Apparently, Wayne left that message framed in his children's room. I absolutely love that. And I think it's the perfect note on which to wrap up this note. Relax, embrace the power of intention, and have a miraculous day.
And for those of you interested in learning more about Wayne Dyer, stay on. Um, and I'll also give you a list of other notes I think you'll enjoy and some of the quotes from the sidebar of the PDF. So about the author of The Power of Intention, Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. Uh, Dyer is an internationally renowned author and speaker in the field of self-development. He's the author of 30 books, has created many audio programs and videos, and has appeared on thousands of television and radio shows. His books, Manifest Your Destiny, Wisdom of the Ages, There's a Spiritual Solution to Every Problem, and the New York Times bestsellers, 10 Secrets for Success and Inner Peace, The Power of Intention, Inspiration, and Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, have all been featured as national public television specials. Wayne holds a doctorate in educational counseling from Wayne State University and was an associate professor at St. John's University in New York. That's all from hayhouse.com. And you can learn more at drwaynedyer.com. And if you enjoyed this note, you'll definitely like the notes on Ask and It Is Given, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire, Loving What Is, and feel the fear and do it anyway. All right, now we'll check out some of the quotes from the sidebar. We'll start with a quote from Wayne. He says, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. And a quote from Tagore who says, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And another one from Wayne who says, Say to yourself, I'm here on purpose. I can accomplish anything I desire, and I do it by being in harmony with the all-pervading creative force in the universe. And your friends are God's way of apologizing for your relatives. <laughs> and finally, a quote from Wilhelm Steckel. He says, The mark of the immature man is that he wants to die nobly for a cause while the mark of the mature man is that he wants to live humbly for one. All right, that wraps up this note. I hope you loved it. And if you haven't read the book yet, please check it out. If you have, you may want to reread it. Hope you enjoyed the big ideas and have a wonderful, wonderful day. May we embrace the power of intention in all aspects of our lives. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.